Hey guys, it is Tuesday, it is 3 o'clock, so it is live session again today. And looking forward to today's session, I've got a little bit of a surprise for you. So it's going to be epic. Um, but before we get to that, we're going to talk a bit about property investment, okay? And then there's a little surprise along with that. But before we get to that, some announcements. So guys, entrepreneurs, business owners, tomorrow I'm doing an event with... Pleroma and the Centurion Soccer Comet at the Moonshot Cafe at King Price. Okay, it's gonna be like a QA kind of interview session. Um, they're gonna ask me a few questions about business, about startup, about entrepreneurship, and I'm gonna answer them. And then people in the audience can also ask questions. So if you're a business owner, if you're an entrepreneur, you need to be there tomorrow at 10.30 and you can check my Instagram and Facebook page for more details. Then on the 24th, um, I'm in Witbank with Ayasa. Uh, we're gonna do a talk there on the 26th, is it 26th, 27th? Uh, 27th, I'm at the epic networking event in Bryanston. So people from Johannesburg and Bryanston make sure to attend that one people from Vitbank make sure to attend the also event it's the Institute of Estate Agents South Africa I'm gonna do a talk there on entrepreneurship and business in Vitbank and then in Bryanston cool and then on the 3rd of October we have a how to invest in property seminar okay so I'm gonna talk a bit about property investment today and then next week we're gonna have a follow-up live session about the tips and tools in terms of property investment which leads up to the event on the 3rd of October um, how to invest in property cool guys sounds exciting uh, Byron McDonald just streams Jonathan Marcel Theo and Andres what's up if you're excited for this week's live session uh, send a shop uh, on the live session so I know we're on the right track and then any property investment questions that you have start getting them together so you can uh, post them and ask them live and we will answer them so let's get into the thick of things who reads the real estate investors magazine okay of South Africa and this month the September October edition um, you will find me on page 32 let me get this right here page 32 um, real estate investor magazine uh, what an awesome awesome um, moment to be featured in South Africa's real estate investors magazine uh, on page 32 and 33 I got a whole spread <laughs> so guys it's awesome awesome news so go get your uh, real estate investors magazine of South Africa the rear mag and then you can read all of the things we talked about and questions they've asked in terms of property investment um, and my journey in terms of getting there at 22. So what I thought today for the live session, we'll answer some of the questions that they asked me, share it on the live session, we can talk about it and you can answer, ask some more questions if you'd like to. So one of the first questions they asked me, Albert, briefly describe your first experience in property investment. You know, what was your first experience? So I bought my first property when I was 19 years old, uh, first year in university. Uh, so that was my first experience. Um, and I bought a broken down property. It was a bit messed up. It was very old. It was a very, very old property. Uh, so my, my first experience was I came here, tank top, you know, rugby shorts, Pity Brücke and then came here and worked here myself. So we basically um, redid the whole property, uh, starting with the front gate, starting with the, uh, the kitchen, all of the things, the rooms. We took out the carpets, put in tiles. So I basically came here myself, got a team of a few guys. I got my family to help me out as well. So my brother, my dad and my mom, we would all come here and work very, very hard ourselves. Um, changing this property into a property that we could let out. So what I basically did is I changed the four bedroom property into an eight bedroom property uh, which we then started to rent out um, or I rented it out to students and young professionals that's still currently staying here and this property I've had since 
since first year in varsity and is still generating uh, rental income all this time so that's my first experience in terms of property investment um, that was the first question another question they asked me was please share your top business investment tips for our readers in terms of property investment and my top tip will be don't over invest okay don't over invest too many property investors buy a property in a let's say a medium or lower class area and then the first thing they do is they pull everything out right kitchen um, they you know pull out the living room all of the cupboards everything and they replace it with top standard you know kitchens with awesome tops and you know all of the tops you know um, uh, ovens and stove plates and everything and they make it aluminium windows and they make this property like it looks like it should be in Santa okay but it's in a lower class or in a, a medium class area and what they're basically doing is they're over investing because there's a rental like limit in the area that you won't get you won't cross that rental limit in terms of what you would get for renting for the property but the value of the property becomes more than what you can actually get for the property in terms of rent or what you can actually sell the property for because of the area's value or the area's um, location and everything so what sometimes happen is people over invest they do everything new they they put in a lot of money and then they can't get that back and their return on investment suffers so what you want to do is if you buy a property you want to make it just right just enough investment to let it fit with the area and be proper in the area and according to the area's value so that you can get the maximum return on investment and then you also want to focus on key in areas where you invest for example if I buy a property right and or one of my properties and if I want to put tenants in it right will it help me to paint the back walls the walls at the back of the property to have the back of the property looking perfect will that stop tenants from you know staying in my property no it would not but if the front of my property the front gate the front grass looked horrible they won't even come to see the property they would just turn around and leave so it's way more important for me to invest in the front of my property in the the gate as you come in the grass as you come in the first view that you see it's way more important to put my money there and invest there instead of spending a lot of money in the back of the property where it doesn't really change the result so make sure that you don't over invest make sure that you focus on areas that will actually change the result that will give you the result that you want and then make do with what you have change the property according to the area value and uh, don't just pull everything out and spend so much money and um, dilute your investment or um, you know lose on your return of investment sorry guys my mind is on a lot of places today okay cool so um, on the live session we have today Byron, uh, Just Streams, Jonathan, Marcel, Theo, Andris, um, Klaus, Michael, Dominique, Hendru, Vian, Diewald, Armand, James, Coach Radali and James saying words of wisdom right there. Uh, what we're doing today is I was actually featured in the Real Estate Investors Magazine for this month, the September October edition and they asked me a few questions. I got a full spread in the magazine and they asked me a few questions and I'm actually tackling some of that questions on the live session here today, answering some of them uh, so that you can also get some of this information. But if you don't have it, go get the Real Estate Investors Magazine of this month. We have some questions on Facebook as well. Uh, for the Facebook guys, I can't see this, the questions. I see Instagram here, but we'll go through the questions quickly. Okay, Yaku's first question. What is your view on resilient? Okay, being resilient. Okay, next one. Would you recommend residential property over listed property in current economic climate? Okay. And the third one. 
opinion on land expropriation without compensation. <laughs> okay, that's a big one. Um, Vian is also saying, Jij was goed bij Hoerskool Petersburg. Thank you, Vian. And uh, hey, Dylan, thanks for joining in. So, biggest question on Facebook is, what's your view on land claims uh, without compensation and being resilient and, you know, focusing on residential uh, at this moment in our economy, in our situation? Um, guys and girls, that's a very difficult question to answer because I don't know the future, okay? <laughs> if I knew the future, uh, I would have been able to leverage it way more, but I don't, okay? I don't know what's going to happen precisely. I don't know exactly what's going to happen in the next few years, but I do do my research and I do talk to a lot of the big property investors in South Africa, hear their thoughts on things and what is going to happen or what is what do they predict is going to happen in South Africa in terms of um, property and land claims and things like that so the general feeling amongst investors at this stage is that they still buy land and they still buy property and they still develop okay the general feeling amongst the public people that owns houses just for staying in them they're quite stressed okay they want to sell people with farms people with residential property that just has it as a family home they're quite stressed they quite want to sell they're quite um you know about the whole economic situation and the land claims they they're not feeling too well about that but i can't say more than that because I don't want to tell you to go and buy a property and then next week uh, something happens. And I also don't want to, to tell you to stay out. And then the next five years, nothing happens and you could have been making money. What I can tell you from my personal journey is when I had to buy my first property, people said, don't buy. You know, it's still there. There's still some remnants of the 2008 crash. So it's not a good time to buy. I bought my first property it started making me a lot of money then when I had to buy my second property they said no you know don't buy we're going through recession right South Africa's in recession I bought my second property anyway I started making a lot of money from it when I wanted to buy my third property they said hey uh, the financial um, guy was just fired from Parliament the rand dropped with like I think it dropped with two rand or four rand or something and I should not buy prop property right now because of the economic situation. I bought my third property. So through all of this economic variance, through the situations in our country, if you use all of those things as excuses to stand on the sideline and say, hey, now's not a good time, then I have news for you. There will never be a good time, okay? There will never be a perfect time. Uh, to buy property, to start a business, to start something that you dream of. So I would say go for it, um, make informed decisions, choose your areas very well, to make sure you have a good return on investment. There's a lot of factors that you need to take a look at in terms of property investment. You can hear more about this at our How to Invest in Property seminar on 3 October. You can check my um, uh, Facebook and Instagram pages for more details and make sure you make a good investment but i won't say you should stand on the sidelines and wait because there will never be a perfect time i hope that's a good answer uh, guys i hope you can do something with that theo says uh, quick thoughts when people sell it's most likely a good time to buy <laughs> yes and guys to be quite honest and this is the hard truth right i'm a property investor so from who do i buy properties people that can't afford the properties anymore and they have to sell right so they have to sell at a lower price I buy properties from people that needs to sell and then to who do I rent out these properties to people that have sold their homes and need a place to stay so they rent or people that can't afford properties they rent so it's a hard truth but the thing is as an investor in any economic situation you should be able to make money and create wealth guys the live session is great we're having some good feedback on the live session today let's do another question from the uh, real estate investors magazine um, what makes a great property investment oh but what makes a great property investment and my answer to that is elbow grease okay um, elbow grease 
makes a good property investment. Great return on investment makes a good property investment. I, I talk to a lot of property investors and they say that, hey, I just bought this new property. I just made a property investment. And then I ask them, where did you invest? What type of property? And then most of the time it's a property that's already finished, right? It's perfect already. It's a townhouse somewhere in a state that they're gonna, that they bought and now they want to rent it out. And they don't have to put any elbow grease in there. So the value is already there and they pay for that value, right? And they pay for that value and now they have to rent it out at a, at a price. And their return on investments are so low. Um, my, my strategy on the other hand is to buy a property where there's not a lot of value in a valuable area but there's not a lot of value there and then with elbow grease and with hard work you create the value okay you go there and do the work yourself you change the value of the property from low to high until you have a high value property in that area then you create the value then you create that return on investment and that is a good investment having a re high return on investment and changing a property and to create your own value i mean i've said in property seminars where people talk about a six percent return on investment and then they're like oh six percent on a property i'm cringing i'm thinking hey if you only get six percent return on your property then you could have rather put your money in a in a fixed investment or in the bank or whatever. Um, you need to get at least more than 15% on a property in terms of return on investment. And the best way to do that is to put in the elbow grease and work it yourself and create that value for yourself. Cool guys, uh, on the live session we have Byron, Just Streams, Jonathan, Marcel, Theo, Andris, um, Klaus, Michael, Dominique, Andrew, Vian, Diewald, Armand, James, Coach Radali, um, Dylan, and Peter. Guys and all the guys on Facebook, thank you so much for joining in on the live session. We talked a bit about property investment today and my latest feature in the Real Estate Investors Magazine and we answered some of those questions and some questions that we got on the live session today. I hope it was really valuable to you. If you want to know more about property investment and what to do, be sure to check my page on Facebook and Instagram. We have an event called How to Invest in Property coming up soon, 3 October in Pretoria. So make sure you do not miss that. And we will give some more property investment tips and tools next week, Tuesday at 3, same time on the live session. And then you can ask some more questions on property investment. So make sure not to miss next week's session. Cool guys, have a great day, have a cool week and good luck with your property investment endeavors.